I saw a Native American, uh, a Hopi Indian make coils like that. <laughs> That's how they did it. Uh, today, nowadays, we have things like tables. <laughs> and you, you would make a coil like this. I would just add that, you know, in our first semester we did a lot of hand building projects at home. It's actually not that easy to make coils because your hand gesture, how it rolls off your palms matter a lot. Mine came out flat yeah. a lot. And I had to ask Clayton, like, well, show me what your hands actually look like and what areas is actually contact with because when I was rolling it, it would turn flat and it wasn't round that way. So it takes practice to roll coils, actually. So the first mistake people make is what I call a short stroke. The clay doesn't even get a chance to make a full revolution. The next thing is parallel hands, which makes it go flat, 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 flat. So when I make a coil, I open up my hands like this, so they're, the point of contacts radiate out from the center of my hand, and as I'm rolling it, if you watch, I'm changing the angle. I'm, see, I'm turning my wrists as I do it, like that. And that. Now here's the thing though, my hands suck the moisture out of the clay as I'm doing it. The table sucks the moisture out of the, your, the clay as you're doing it. So by the time you, you've got this coil, it's, it's got this dryness around it, right? And it won't actually stick to itself because of that. And an indication that it's dry is sometimes you see kind of these like blends like, through it. That's when you know it's also really dry. Is so, there a way around that? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> so the way around it is the extruder. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought. So we will, what we're going to, we're going to make coils. We will make coils using an extruder. So your hands and your table are even part of it, right? So it's going to be fresh to, to itself like that. I made this shape earlier today in preparation for this demonstration. It took me three minutes. Wow. <laughs> Once you, it's like knitting, you know? It's really hard to learn how to get your hands to do your curl one bit, two bit. But once you figure that out, it just goes like clockwork, right? So what the strategy, the building strategy will be this. You'll make a dome shape like this that's wide at the bottom, coming up to the top like this. Clay likes to be cylinders, cones, and domes when it's plastic, you know, malleable clay, because gravity is working in your favor, right? Um, then what happens next? Uh, I put it out in the I put it out in the sun and turned it periodically uh, while I was waiting for you guys to come. And so now it's stiff enough to hold its own shape, but still malleable enough to be um, manipulated with a paddle. So the kind of paddle I like is a baseball bat that's been modified in this way because it's more, more versatile. And notice that also that I always, always, always use a turntable of a abandon wheel when I hand build. So what I'm going to do now is re reverse this. Step one is to paddle the top of the dome flat because the top will now be the bottom. Okay? Now notice my paddle has a sway in it. It has an outward curvature which creates an, a sway here so that it's going to rest out here. It's not really flat. It's curved this way. Notice also that I had applied wet flannel to the lower half so that when this gets stiff enough to hold the shape, this part of the dome is still as plastic as it was when I started. So those are the strategies for the uh, first half uh, of, of the dome. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Now I've added a little, little extra clay. I call it a shrink ring. So what you didn't see because there was clay in the way is when I built this, I had a coil inside, a coil outside, and then I started building so that I have what's called a shrink ring. Now what I'm going to do is pinch that. It's, a, it's like thick. It's the, the wall thicknesses are the thickest right here at the join. So I'm going to go around and pinch that up so that it's uh, the same thickness as the rest of the dome that I built. I'm going to use a metal rib. The kind I like is the ones that serrated. Um, your kit doesn't have one of these, but but I think the, you know. Um, the reason why I like serrated rib is whenever there's a, um, it looks like I'm scraping the clay, but in fact I'm dragging the high parts off, and into the low parts. Right. So it's never really, this would build up if I was just scraping the clay off. No, I'm moving the clay from one place to another. And I'll, I can tell when, I, when I'm done, this recess right here, this dimple, you know, you could, it's easy to see because of the serrations. If I just keep working that area until that goes away, then, I'm, then I know I can move on to another area like that. And notice also that I'm, the gesture with the rib is back toward the center so that this this will be this point right here will be the apex of the curve from here on it's going to go back the other way so it's it's, it's dome number two and i'm ready for i'm now ready for dome number two so i'm going to put a little bevel on this edge because that's going to be where the next coil goes now, here's the anatomy of a um, extruder. We've got four extruders, that's four. So there shouldn't be anybody waiting in line for an extruder, <laughs> okay. So this is the silk, let's see. Let's start with the die. This, is, this, this die is the size of the coil that you'll use, and there's a dozen half a dozen of these at school. This is, the, this is called the collet. It's what affixes the die to the cylinder. This is the cylinder. The cylinder is uh, usually on a quick release so that it can be cleaned easily, right? Um, here in my studio, I clean the uh, cylinder before I use it. At school, you'll clean the cylinder after you use it. And the reason is, there's other people who are wanting to use it. Since I'm the only one who uses this, I can, I can afford to just let it get all crusty and just clean it before I use it. So that's, that's particular to the, the studio. So the uh, cylinder is mounted on the... This, the cylinder is affixed to the mount. The mount, um, the ram is, uh, has a clove hitch on it that you put over the mount and it, it ratchets like that. So the next thing I'm going to do is put the uh, collet and die on and I'm going to some clay. Oh, one interesting thing is the pug that comes out of the pug mill is the perfect size to load a, to load the, um, yeah, you don't have to wedge the clay for this project. You can just take the pug right from the pug mill and load it right into the, into the um, extruder. So let's pretend that this is a pug. Uh, you'll want to use more clay than that when you're doing this. You'll want to fill the thing when you're doing this. We'll put the ram down in the cylinder, ratchet it down like that. 
So, ta-da! <laughs> a coil now that is a uniform size. I didn't touch it. Haven't, it hasn't been exposed to the table or my hands. So I don't really need to worry about it sticking. But what I will do, and I suggest you do, is take the, the extra precaution of having your, your little round sponge in a bowl with water, and you're only going to put enough water on there where the two join. So I notice how I like using it, the, the, the turntable and turning the sponge. This way, I don't get this smeary mud puddle. If you get too much water on it, it's slippery and you won't be able to get the clay to join. Now here's the trickiest part. Each, each time you put a coil on the course, if you're making a dome, you want each coil to be shorter than the last one, right? So people see me do this and theirs goes like that. Mm -hmm. And that happens for two reasons. One, they put the same size coil on and then they pinch it. If you pinch it, it's going to get longer. If it's longer, it's going to get wider, not narrower. So um, with your video, mm -hmm. see if you can get it up like this so that everyone can see that I'm pulling the <laughs> coil down on the outside and up on the inside, it's uh, e with an equal and opposite force. So it's, it's this action. I'm pulling the clay up with my index fingers, my, with my fingers, with my left hand, and pulling down with my thumb with my right hand. And it's the, they're right across from each other so that it's a, it's a continuous, force and that if you can get that rhythm going you can you can move right along like stitch 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 stitch, stitch. now this takes practice uh, but what I'm wanting to encourage people to do is to teach yourself how to get that opposing force right from the start you'll see others who didn't it taught that way and they'll stitch 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 on the outside all the way around then they'll stitch 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 on the inside all the way around and that just takes twice as long mm -hmm. that's all mm. <laughs> this is just the, the most efficient way to get it to happen and I saw this done uh, in Abiquiu New Mexico in 1972 I know I'm that old. <laughs> uh, I saw a, a Pueblo Indian doing these coils, and that's exactly how she did it. Just like that. So this is not new. <laughs> this is not a new way of making coils. Coil building is ancient. Uh, you heard the, the Udu? Mm -hmm. The Udu predates skin drums by centuries. Uh, the vessel is made for carrying water, so there's two openings. If you ever try to get water in a bottle, you know the air has to go out before water can get in. Well, that's what the hole's for. Mm -hmm. So they, 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 could, they could use that to carry water. It's flat on the bottom, they dot bounce on their head, and then at night they play the drums. So the women make the drums, the women get the water with the drums, and the women play the drums. Um, and those were all hand built with using coils um, for thousands of years. You know, archeologists actually argue about how old this technique is. <laughs> right? Because they can't really prove how old it is. Anyway, um, to kind of drive home the point, watch carefully now. I'm gonna make sure that the next coil is, whoa, is shorter than the last coil. Before I start mm -hmm. and so I'm going to smush that down and think of it like banking inward mm -hmm. you know on a racetrack it, it, it banks outward you're going to reverse that every coil you put on is going to bank inward as you work like that. so this is the entirety of our hand build we don't have to like what are we doing with it after we're oh is it just a dome? Or? 
let's go outside and have a look at some vessels made like this to answer that question. I just have a quick question.